Hello everyone. So in this video, we are now going to install the Power BI uh, desktop version on, on our computers. Uh, obviously I'm going to do it in my dev environment, but generally now, like we are seeing, we are manipulating the data and we are obviously working with some of the uh, machine learning uh, algorithms, and uh, we are slowly moving towards the uh, the advanced analytics on the SQL and and PySpark level. So obviously now the question is: once we prepare our data and once the data is ready, what are we gonna do with this data? Are we going to store it? Are we going to share in you know some sort of uh, text file base or parquet file? What we're going to uh, do with this data. So that's where the next layer come into the into the architecture, where we discuss uh, uh, the the presentation of the data back to the business. Uh, because in the full journey, we extract the data, we manipulate, we generate the the uh, the uh, nice or uh, interesting patterns or information out of the raw data. And now uh, it's our job to present it to the business in a way so they can understand it. And obviously that's where the whole data visualization uh, layer comes into the picture uh, of, of, the, of the enterprise data platform or enterprise data architecture. So in this video, we are going to take the first step to, to install the Power BI uh, uh, desktop, which we are going to use to build all the fancy dashboard for, for our business. So that, that will cover the, the visualization part. And obviously we're gonna see the, uh, the uh, SSRS or uh, SQL Server reporting as well. So we can uh, display the data uh, where the Power BI is limited. And I'm gonna actually tell you there are many spots where the, you cannot use Power BI, especially once the information is moving from aggregation towards the towards the detail level. So that's where we need to find an alternate ways that okay, how we can how we can present that information back to the business in a in an efficient manner. And that's where obviously the 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 SSRS or SQL Server reporting services comes into into the picture. Uh, so both tools have their own uh, on use cases. Both tools are very powerful uh, to to provide the capability. It really depends upon what kind of requirements you are getting from the business. And you know, once we get the requirement, we have a phase where we do the analysis of the requirement, and then we decide. And obviously, that analysis also. Uh, uh, include defining the data model that we're going to actually build or reuse to address the requirements. So the same thing, we actually choose the tool, whether it's going to be a use case for our Power BI or it's going to be a use case of our SSRS. So let's jump uh, into our dev environment and we are going to start from the scratch. I'm going to show you how you can install Power BI on your SQL, uh, on your Windows Server 2019. So let me share my screen. Okay, so you can go to powerbi.microsoft.com and you can download the desktop edition because we are going to use the desktop edition. There are different plans and obviously in your enterprise, if you are uh, uh, if you have Microsoft subscription or if your organization is, uh, is uh, a Microsoft shop, so they have the subscription and uh, they have the, the, uh, uh, the license accordingly. Normally we have the professional and we have the premium license. Of, of of Power BI and it really depends what kind of licensing uh, the the organization has been purchased and that's where the IT comes into the picture because they calculate the total number of licenses and then they they uh, uh, deal with the with the licensing team from from the Microsoft side and they they get the best uh, deal from Microsoft based on the number of users uh, or, or or you know the 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 volume requirement from from the uh, enterprise right but the best part for, for us, like all other software, uh, a very great news that Power BI for desktop is free. Like you can download and you can build as many dashboard as you want, but obviously you cannot publish this dashboard until unless you purchase the uh, Power BI license, right? So, and obviously uh, uh, we are going to use it on the free version of SQL Server developer edition. So we are not uh, allowed to, to uh, use these uh, dashboard for business 
purposes until unless we get the license from from microsoft right so keep these uh, couple of things in mind uh, but it won't stop you to build all sort of you know uh, advanced dashboard that you have seen even in in the marketing campaign and you know even in the conferences you have all the capabilities uh, 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 and the tools available from Microsoft to build these these uh, these uh, dashboards uh, or analytics by yourself, right? So you can go to uh, this URL and uh, you're gonna see download free button. I'm just going to hit, and now it's going to download the uh, the Power BI uh, application on on my desktop. I'm just waiting for it to let me see why it's not appearing. Or maybe it's a bit shy today. It's not. That's a yeah. You can get the download. All right. Let's see if we can. So if these kind of thing happen, we just need to go and do it, uh, download it manually. So you can see now I'm coming on on the on the uh, downloading side directly. I'm going to select the the English version. We have other languages as well available, but I'm going to stick to the English and I'm going to use the 64-bit uh, version. So let me quickly download it, and now it's going to. So you can see it is downloading. Uh, hopefully it's not going to take much time. Yeah, looks like it's going to uh, take less than one minute. And while I, it's downloading, I'm just gonna, you know, avoid the, the, the length of the video. I'm just going to pause. All right, like you can see, we have the, the application Power BI downloaded on, on my system. I'm just going to, Run it. And the installation is going to be pretty straightforward. Like we are not going to face any, any issue uh, because especially once you install the SQL server, uh, uh and and the dot net uh environment in your in your uh, even uh development environment most of the libraries are already been installed so it really give you any any error so for us obviously the language is going to be english of the power bi by the way it shows you, you can develop the the dashboard in many other languages if you want to So you can see it's preparing the installation. Yeah, so now it's ready. I accept the agreement. There is no option for me to, to refuse. Uh, by the way, you can select your own location if you want to uh, customize the, the installation. You can install on any other drive. It really depends upon where you want to install your, your Power BI. In this case, I'm gonna select the default and create an extra uh, a shortcut. Yeah, I need it and then that that's how simple the installation and that that's i think something really powerful uh with with uh with power bi that the installation is very very simple and you're gonna see by a couple of clicks you have the full application uh with full feature installed on on your computer so which is a great thing uh, and obviously once you have your tool then you can start building all the capabilities uh, that that you want to you want to do uh, you know uh, build from from the uh, advanced analytical perspective remember this thing that most of these things which we're going to see in here they're going to be applicable into into the azure analytics uh, service that is more like the the uh, the uh, cloud based analytical service which microsoft is now providing and obviously behind the scene it is using the tabular model uh, which use the same language dex which we are going to use into into power bi
you can see the installation is is progressing uh it's a bit slow because uh, like you can see i have a dev machine uh which is obviously a virtual environment and i'm already running many things on 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 my uh, uh system you can see memory is already spiking up to 73 percent so it really depends that what configurations you have normally power bi if you are not running other application it uh, it run uh reasonably but obviously if you have other application like sql server dot net uh your studio dot net installed then obviously you're gonna see some some uh performance issue but they are not going to uh happen in your actual dev environments in your in your uh in your business or uh, in your jobs So like you can see, I have allocated 11 gig to my virtual machine. I might increase that to, to maybe to a little bit more to just accommodate Power BI because for Power BI, obviously we, we need uh, some uh, some additional uh, memory, especially once we are going to uh, load uh, large data into, into the Power BI. So let it install. And then once it's finished, we'll continue with the with the power bi application all right so we can see that the the installation has finished successfully like i mentioned that you're not going to face any any issue with with the uh with the uh, installation especially uh with with uh if you have already in, in the .NET framework installed on, on your machine so now you can see the the launch power, um, power bi desktop is ticked so as soon as i hit finish and by the way you can note i have an uh, icon on my desktop so i can launch it from there as well now what it's going to do it's going to launch the power bi desktop application which i can use to build the dashboard of any kind uh, and then i can publish this dashboard and obviously once it comes to publishing then you need the license or you need the subscription because then your uh, power bi uh, file is going to be moved from your local environment or local machine towards the towards the uh the uh, cloud or or the office 365 space or wherever your power uh power bi instance has been hosted right so but up to that point you can build any capabilities and that that's where the the power bi is shining at the moment that you have no constraint to build uh any kind of you know uh, a dashboard and that that's what we're gonna do we're gonna build some of the best dashboards which are going to use the enterprise data model to to show the capabilities of of some advanced analytics to 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 the audience or or the businesses and obviously these can be even refined or or you know enhanced based on your own requirements so let it uh, uh, uh open up uh, like I mentioned, you can see now, uh, I think I need to increase the CPU power uh, because it is consuming CPU uh, uh, quite highly. And then memory consumption is now 85. Uh, so I might need to just, you know, increase resources a little bit more on, on this machine. All right. So what I'm going to do, uh, just for, for this uh, demo, I'm just going to get the data. So I'm fine, get started. Okay, let me get the data because I have the SQL Server installed on the same machine. So as a first, uh, 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 first as a first uh, piece of dashboard, I I'm going to hit the SQL Server to get the data from one of my SQL Server table and we are going to build the dashboard. So let me select the SQL Server. And by the way, you can see these are all the, the connectors which are available for you. So we have a bunch of connectors. So you can see Power BI is not like a dashboard tool. Is the, uh, it is the analytical platform. Like it can help you to connect all the all the uh, data sources and you can grab the data and then uh, process the data within the Power BI environment and display it to the user. Like, like you can see, we have all these capabilities uh, 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 build within within the Power BI uh, uh, application. So it has its own ETL component. It uses the language M, which can, you can use the Power Query to you know to massage the data. And then we have additional uh, 
uh, uh, uh, theory uh, tools and and features that we can use to massage the data before we bring it to to our dashboard. So it itself is a is a is a uh, is a uh, analytical platform. This application that you can use to address any kind of analytical requirement. But obviously there are advantages and disadvantages. Depends upon what kind of work you are doing. It if you put everything into one tool, obviously that's going to be tightly coupled and it's going to be hardly manage uh, and not obviously a very good architecture on longer term basis right so these are all the design constraints that you need to think of but by looking at the 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 connected you can see most of the connectors are available and some of the connectors like you can now talk to azure synapse analytics and you can get the the data from from there as well so let me just show you yeah so you can see SQL database, Azure SQL analysis services, you can extract the data, Postgres is there, table storage is there. You can even uh, connect to, to the block storage to, to get the data directly from your data lake, right? Uh, and that is uh, available as well. So almost, and we can even connect to the data break. So the all work we have done and we have loaded into, into our uh, PySpark, uh, we have used and uh, load the data and store it into our data brick instance. What we're gonna do in one of the demo, we're gonna actually extract that final data, which we have uh, processed and stored, and we're gonna actually display it on, on, the, on, the, uh, on the Power BI. So these are all the use cases you can see are available uh, for you from the connector perspective that you can use to address those use cases. So I'm going to, because uh, I have the SQL Server uh, available locally, I'm just going to select SQL Server, click connect, and I'm going to talk to my local instance. And obviously the server CSCYT, let me quickly. I'm just copy my server name in here. I'm just leaving the database option. I'm not going to, and I'm going to, uh, so import and direct query, we're gonna see it in the, in the next video. Right now, I'm just going to click import, uh, and I'm just going to select the table, right? So include relationship column, yeah, all good. I'm not, so let's see, yeah. So use my credential, I'm going to use my window login, which I'm actually at the moment, the local uh, login on, on this server. But obviously if your computer is, is uh, connected to the domain, you can use your domain account. Obviously if you have access to the database, it will use the domain credential to connect, or you can use the, the SQL server uh, account to, to connect it, right? The, the best thing to, to connect is use your Active Directory account because then once you publish it, then you can uh, replace your uh, window account with the service account that has been configured to, to access the table and that has the limited permission from the security perspective. But we are talking to, to, the, to the dev environment, so we are good. So we are going, I'm going to use my local account. All right, yeah, we are using an encrypted connection. I can understand the, the warning. That, that's just a warning because it's unable to encrypt the connection. Nothing to do with, with the error. All right, so I'm successfully connected. You can uh, see I have all these databases available. So what I'm going to do uh, as, a, as a first step, I'm going to get my person and employee table. So what I'm going to do, so I can load it. Once I click on load, it's gonna load the data, uh, load the table directly, and it's gonna move me towards the, towards the, uh, towards the, uh, the Power BI designer. But if I want, I can actually go and I can manipulate my data or prepare my data or do some sort of transformation before I load the data into my Power BI. So I'm going to do, I'm going to now click on transform data just to show you if I click on it, what I'm gonna see. So it's gonna open the query editor where I'm going to see all my uh, uh, my tables and I can uh, do a couple of, you know, uh, transformation uh, on, on, on these table before I load them into, into Power BI.
And by the way, that there's uh, something very powerful, like it still give you, you know, uh, once we uh, talk to our database, we believe the data has already been transformed and went through the ETL process to, to load into, into the, the, the final, uh, uh, final uh, container or a storage container for us to consume. But still, if you want to apply some additional logic, which you want to apply at the, at the last layer uh, uh, through, the, through uh, this interface, uh, uh, through the query editor, you can apply all those transformations. All right, so what I'm going to do. It is loading, there are pending changes. You can see it is now connecting and it's loading the, the data. And by the way, you can see the, the resource consumption because obviously Power BI is a, uh, is a heavy application. It, it wants it especially load the data. It, it reads the data and in the import, by the way, we uh, push it to the next video, but normally in the import, the Power BI load the full data from, from the database. And then it, it actually, it lets you process the data. And that's where the import, pro, uh, import mode is way efficient than the direct query mode but more on it uh, in the in the later video all right looks like it has loaded the data but i think we need to we need to uh, see the 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 query editor so what we are going to do so let's go back so now uh, obviously we're going to discuss all these uh, this tab in detail. I don't want to, to uh, put so much into one video, but what we can do uh, just on, on, on this, we are going to right click and edit query because edit query will open the dialog box for us. So that, that's, the, that's the place where you can, you know, uh, you can apply the transformation. So for example, uh, if I don't need any column, I can just, you know, take it out from, from, from my uh, table. And I'm going to show it to you in, in, in here. So for example, I don't need the modified date col column because I know that's the system column, the uh, row GUID is not needed. So I'm just going to remove these two columns. All right. And current flag is true. Uh, leave the current flag. And by the way, I can apply, let me see if I can apply the, replace value. So for example, I want to replace the, null and I'm going to replace it with unknown, right? So let me just replace the value with unknown. I'm going to do the same thing in, in here. So these are just the, and like if you remember in the in the SQL, uh, once we discussed the SQL, okay, we mentioned that we always, null doesn't make any sense for the business because it's just going to confuse them. So we always put something meaningful. So that means these values are not uh, 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 available or are not uh, null. Or even in this, because null is showing the top level. So we can even say top level or uh, because it's a numeric value. So what we can do, we can just give it a 999, right? So that that will, because we are not going to sum up the, the organizational level. So it's, you know, it's more like uh, the, uh, the business rule that is coming from the business, what kind of value they're gonna see by value. And you can see, we are defining different value for, for null at different column, like here, minus 999 means that this level, the number is not available. So a business is immediately gonna understand. So these sort of, you know, uh, 
transformation we can apply we have so much functionality it's more like you know it has the full transformation capabilities that you can uh, uh, apply on your data before you can expose it to to the to the uh, power bi dashboard right so the model is load transform extract elt so it's not etl extract transform and load it is actually extract uh, transform and load no it is etl so it, it's going to extract the data and then it lets you transform and then it load it into into your uh power bi uh, uh, dashboards so i think we are good so let me just save my changes and you're gonna see as soon as i uh, save it it's going to now refresh the data based on the changes i have made in there now i'm not going to go into the detail just to show you the uh just to show you how we are going to build. So you can see the, the both tables are lit, uh, linked with each other. And obviously, if you want to see, uh, you can see the, the, the common key is business entity ID, which is beautiful uh, in, in, in the Power BI. So you don't need to worry about if the column names are same, it's going to auto detect the relationship and it's going to build that relationship, which is good. Uh, so now if we come back in, in, in here and now, what I'm going to do, let me see how we can build a very nice uh, my year, uh, uh, or, or tile. So I'm going to pick up, I'm just looking at what's, what could be the, the, the uh, yes. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to, And I'm going to now count the, so you can see I'm just uh, actually designing. Let me just, let me think, let me just start with bar chart. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to count the number by the, by the job title. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to say, okay. Just let me just see. Yeah, let me just create a quick my year on, on it. Let me first remove it and I'm going to now, let me just quickly create a Maya. And what Maya is, I'm just going to explain in the upcoming videos. Uh, right now, just bear with me. I'm going to say total employees by job title. And by saying it, you can understand what I'm going to do. Count of now you can see as soon as I put the 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 uh, small bracket, all the uh, uh, column names are coming. So I'm just going to I'm going to close. I'm just going to hit okay. And now my my year is ready. What my year is? If you don't understand, don't worry. I'm going to explain it. So let me just put it in in there. To the job title. All right. So yeah, that's better. So you can see what I have done. I've actually created the the product uh, the the count of the uh, the uh, the job title 
by uh, the count of the employees by the job title. The same theory we have written in the, in the SQL, uh, so you can see. And the chart doesn't look uh, very nice. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to shift it into, yeah, I think that that's better, all right? And you can see we have a bunch of, of jobs. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to show, let's say, four, four, 10. So you can see if I actually select my chart and if I come into the filter, what I can do instead of, you know, uh, all I can, Let me see where are those. All right, I think that's much better. Yeah, so let me quickly see. I just want to see if how I can filter on, on this one. All right. So I'm just going to, yeah, I think that that's a better one. And what I'm going to do. I am looking. Yeah. Sorry, that, that's the one which I'm looking. I'm just going to explain top five. And I'm going to. That's way better. All right, so what uh, we are doing, so let me first explain uh, what I've done. So I, what I'm going to show, I'm going to show all those five departments where the number of employees are uh, high in, in, in my organization, right? Just as, uh, as, a, as a sample case. So what I did, obviously I don't have the the, the Mayer uh, straight away available, but what we can do, we can create the Mayer. So based on the column, so for example, if you want to create a Mayer on any column in my table, I just need to right click and I need to create the, the uh, new measure based on that column. And then obviously it will open the, uh, the space where I can write my DAX expression to 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 uh, to to calculate uh, the the measure. But that that uh, that requires some uh, DAX knowledge that we're gonna actually uh, gain in the upcoming video. For example, uh, for right now, take my word that this uh, this uh, expression is counting the no total number of employees, right? So that's why I mentioned the total number of employees by job title. Now that measure is there, and now I just need to show it by by the job title. So what I uh, uh, what I have done, I have moved it to to the y axis because obviously you can see y axis is going to show the the total number of uh, employees, and then I want to uh, 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 dissect it by the job title. So I just move the job title on the x x axis, right? Now the problem is if I don't put any filter, it's going to show me all the job title and my uh, my tile or my uh, dashboard graphic is look, uh, going uh, to look very clunky. So in order to, to uh, refine it, I just put a put a, a, a condition that show me only top five, right? So that, that's where you're gonna see, we do these kind of uh, matrices a lot. We don't actually flood, open the flood gate of information on our dashboard. Those dashboard doesn't make any sense, especially to the top management and exec. What we normally do, we put some sort of stories, right? So now you can see, one of the biggest biggest uh, skill to learn in the data science to 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 tell the story based on the data or to ask the question. So what it is showing us, this style is showing us the top five uh, 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 
job titles who has the most employees right so that that that's something we're going to show uh, show to to the business and that will obviously help our hr to 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 you know to keep an eye okay which departments are growing and we can even reverse it we can actually we can change it to the bottom which are the lowest one so you can see we are top end and we are showing the uh, what happened So we already have a so how about this is something So we are showing for, but for somehow it is still showing me all the, how many it is showing. All right, I'll see how I can fix that. I'm going to actually discuss so that, that, that these are the, these are the analysis or analytical questions we, we can ask. So that, that's how you normally create. Let me just move it back to, to the, to the top. And let me apply it and i'm going to show you in the in the next video if we want to do the 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 reverse analysis like is instead of you know getting the top five if we want to actually show the the bottom five the only issue it is still showing the bottom five but the number of uh tiles are coming like more than more than uh more than five so we, we can pick that that that's not going to be uh an issue uh so that that's how we uh build the dashboard so we are starting our journey uh towards the visualization now we are bringing so we have already learned sql we have already learned PySpark to handle any kind of data now we are also going to blend the the uh, the additional skill that how we can actually you know use that data to build all these kind of you know fancy dashboard so in this video we have seen the installation of power bi and a very basic uh you know, power, uh, power bi dashboard that we have built with one tile but obviously in our actual uh, dashboard the tiles and the pages are going to be way more than uh, what we have done uh, in this video so hopefully it will be beneficial please install power bi for for upcoming videos because that will help you to to build side by side especially when it comes to the decks i'm going to actually share the 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 data source that we're going to use so you can actually do the do the uh, practice uh, side by side and obviously it's going to help you improve your dex knowledge as well uh hopefully you like the video please uh put any comment if you have any question uh otherwise like the video i'm gonna see you in the next one thanks for watching